Okay, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. EduServe was originally a spin-off from the University of Bath, so um, it's not exactly coming back home, but it's very nice to uh, invite Andy Ramsden, who's head of e-learning at the University of Bath, to give our next talk. Over to you, Andy. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and just to give an opportunity for those who have a QR code reader on their phone, having followed the email instructions, if you scan that QR code, you should get these slides. But I'm not going to give you long enough to actually scan it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but a concept of how it could work. Right. Um, I'm going to get into the, 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 the nitty-gritty in the moment about this sort of where we're going at Bath or what we might see the opportunities for mobile uh, a mobile university within learning teaching context. But just to give it a little bit backdrop and to really develop the point that Andy made earlier about have we been here before and will this differ from earlier waves, etc. This is from the GISC report, or Innovative Practice in E-Learning Case Studies, written back in 2005. So the technologies they were discussing in that report have moved on. We don't infrared beam anymore or anything like that, and John gets credit as well. Uh, but there's a really interesting case study. There's no, it's in this scenario, a walk through, a day in the life of a student. And if you look at what they were doing in that, that ability to create content, to share it, to communicate, to pick up information, to push things on, it still sits there, and we're still talking about those types of things there. So we are, we are moving forward. Will the iPhone and that type of, of mobile 2, mobile 3, push us further, we'll wait to see. And this is really what the aim of this session is about. What I'm hoping to do uh, in sort of 20 minutes or so, but may give you a little less to give you a chance for some questions, is to take us through the idea from the institutional perspective, uh, but the learning teaching perspective, so it, it, it works really nice with the, the, the previous one, in what do we think a mobile university will give us in terms of learning and teaching opportunities. Um, and then have a look at that and think, well, how is that going to change? How is that landscape necessarily going to change from the way staff and students use the devices and other agents have changed, such as myself that sits in the central services? I picked 2015 for various reasons, um, one of which I wanted a narrative to walk towards, so it wasn't just scattergunning, example here, example there, example there, example there, but I tried to give you a, a lens from Bath, so I didn't want to just give you loads and loads of ideas. Uh, but I wanted to kind of make it realistic. The other reason is I was at an event up in Northumbria University a few weeks ago, and interestingly, um, there were people like Derek Morrison keynoted and Laurie Phipps from GIST keynoted, and a very strong message from them was the emergence of mobile devices within the learning teaching space, and it resonated very well with the audience. They were getting very excited about this, and I was on third, so I was a bit sort of grizzled about this anyway. Um, but something I thought I kept going through my head as an operational manager who takes strategy and implements strategy, would Bath be anywhere close to this mobile university learning space? So this is why I picked 2015 to see where we're going to go. And the outcomes, because you like to know that, I'd like to tell you where we're going before we get there, is if you're a geographer or a background, is soil creep is where I'm going to look at. And I'm going to look at the process of soil creep for a number of reasons. Firstly, the outcome you can't really tell if much has changed, the outcome is very uneven. Some bits will shift and move further than others, and, but you don't under, or appreciate the underlying processes that are going on. In fact, we are changing, we are transforming, more it might not be at the speed that people like within learning and teaching, but we've got a, a number of people to take with us. So that's where I'm going to go. The question I've got for you, which will be nice, is once you've, you've looked at this and thought about this and heard this and internalised it, if you can see any opportunities to shortcut the path for us at Bath, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, but we'll wait to see. Okay. So before I get into the nitty gritty, what is sort of teaching and learning in the sense of a mobile university? And I've sort of tried to divide it into two basic Two basic areas from the perspective of the, 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 the academic, the lecturer, and the student. We've got the more of the same, but we're just going to do it on the phone now. So we've shifted from the desktop, the laptop, to the phone. Um, so we've got that type of space going on. And we've got the new learning landscapes, the new opportunities that are coming through that the mobile device gives. And we've had keynotes already today, so the, the location, opportunities, etc. So we are looking at at things about wikitude and the movement of data and the movement of learning opportunities where you are in different geographical locations. So, so that. Now, Bath is, if you're not aware, is a very traditional orthodox institution. We, um, we're research-led. 
We teach face-to-face. 89% of our teaching is done face-to-face. We teach large groups like this. Um, we assess with a piece of coursework and a final semester exam. The piece of coursework tends to be individual, and the exam is individual, the unseen exam. So you've got that backdrop of the way we work, the way we teach our students, etc., to try to work in these mobile opportunities. So even though like Mike Shuffles, etc., is seeing that there's a great benefit for mobility for the learner, in reality, as you'll see why we go to Soil Creek for Bath, is that's not the way we teach and that's not the way we assess our students. So we've got that pressure or tension that we might need to see some opportunities. So we have some opportunities in new landscapes, but a lot of our material for the mobile of a face-to-face -face institution is, is more of the same, but on the mobile device. So um, this is the sort of Jilly Salmon um, quadrants, which is different ways that you can look and interpret this. It's quite a nice one. What I really want to take across this message, I'm going to pick on two of the quadrants to work, work through, so it's going to be a framework of discussion. But there's things like we have core services that we support. We support Moodle. We support, we don't, but there are a number of teams that do. So we support Moodle, IDA, e-learning does. We've got SAMIS, which is our central student record systems, or SITS, as many, it's used in many places, WordPress, etc. So we have a vast number of different technologies being used directly and indirectly with, and to empower and enhance <coughs> learning and teaching. Um, some of them are more classroom based. So again, we're a classroom teaching institution. We would say, well, if I'm going to talk to you in a normal semester system, you're all sitting there, but you're not giving me any feedback and you're not feeding back necessarily outside the Twitter channel with yourselves. So these are missed learning opportunities. So how we move using the mobile devices in these spaces to change them. Um, and I'm going to try, even though we've got some reference to, to the external hosted solutions as well. But I'm going to focus on the top two to start with. Now, before I go into the soil creep, similar message to the earlier one, we're doing, we're doomed. Um, I thought I'd give you the upbeat bit where uh, we've got a lot of pride. Where we're very pleased and proud at Bath for what we're doing, which is, as I say, is focusing on what you do in face to face. That's the, 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 the blend working through there. So, these are. Four examples of various technologies that we're using in some of the outcomes. I think the thing to start with is to go to the bottom of the slide and work up. So, in fact, you've got the, the, um, the sort of quote there from the, the maths lecturer, who's now shifts from a very passive learning experience to a much more active learning experience. So there's nothing sort of radically new there. But by using the mobile technologies to make, give that opportunity, to facilitate it. So we're talking about an enhancement, not an administration thing here. So if I just sort of talk through quickly some of the, 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 uh, the uses to see why we're very keen on mobile and a mobile university, uh, it will give you a bit of a backdrop to why it might take slightly longer to get there. Right, um, first one I haven't the, well, is, is around the idea of student problem sheets in maths. So um, if any of you have taught those types of disciplines with large groups and using problem sheets, very few people complete the problem sheets. The turnaround of the marking and feedback to the pro for the problem sheet is quite long, so the impact is quite low. Yeah, when you're talking about three or 400 mathematicians and a large number of uh, graduate teaching assistants. So what they did here is simply collect them in, sample a few, build a set of questions around that, a set of slides around that to tease out uh, common known problems. And then you've got the students in these groups like this to, to vote firstly to what they think if, if the solution they put on the board to the is, is correct, is it wrong because of this or is it wrong because of that? Then they showed the results and then you get the students in smaller groups to unpick why they said that and they re-vote. Yeah? And then you get a shift and what you tend to find is that it scatters and it sort of works towards the, what you'd expect the overall outcome, which is the correct one. So that was really important and again it changed the way people worked in those spaces. Paul Crawford has been doing things again showing the creativity, peer assessment. A lot of activities here could be peer assessed. So he's using peer assessment and mobile technologies for that in face-to-face -face teaching. Gemma is much more, is that classic, a third of the course, I'm going to give you a number of questions to work through and you'll respond with your, uh, um, your clicker technologies to unpicking groups what is the correct answer. In many cases there isn't a correct answer but it's the point at which you can start the dialogue then. I've got your ideas, I've got your feedback, I've got that and then we can start having a much more sort of uh, uh, more dialogue around the, uh, the area there. And economics is quite interesting because they've been trying to explore the, the, the growth of Twitter in other words. The personal learning networks, 
the back channels, what is going on in a very large group, what are people thinking when they leave the room, how can they facilitate or how can they add and, and enhance that. So we've got a lot of stuff going on uh, in that particular space, and a lot of really exciting stuff and a lot of good outcomes where it's been evidenced, we're, we're sort of uh, moving along in that space really, really nicely. So I suppose the question is why aren't we all running towards it, what's going to going to help, what agents are going to help us move towards a, a much more mobile learning university and which what's going to slow us up slightly and what do we need to understand if we want to make rapid advancements, um, why, etc. So I'm going to take you through the top quadrants, if you can remember those, um, from the perspective of the central services, i.e. myself, uh, staff and students, to pick a, a picture of why it's going to be slow, why, um, and, and why it might be slightly lower impact than we want. So, two things, two things we look after. Um, and this is the uneven nature of it. We've got Moodle as our virtual learning environment, and we've got SAMIS, or SITS, as our student record system. Uh, SAMIS SITS is dominated by staff activity. They put data in. Uh, students come along, they change some of the data. Uh, they also go there to do their end of unit evaluation. So all students are, uh, are, connect, are, are emailed regularly to say, right, your unit's finished, go in and do your evaluation form. That, that stores the data in there, so that runs there. Moodle, the virtual learning environment, very much more dynamic in the sense of its functionality. Samus is pretty much static, uh, and Moodle is very, it changes. It changes regularly, we get regular updates. We, we upgrade every, every uh, sort of 18 months or so. The focus is very much around the learning, so it's much more student-focused, student-requiring interactivity, etc. there. Now, if I looked at those two, and I have some responsibility to maintaining two, I can straight away see I have to adopt a different strategy to mobilise them, for, in a sense, for a mobile device, because the requirements to keep up to date with SAMIS, given the way it changes, is relatively low. So that sort of nice, start, the style sheet solution could be there and we could roll that out over a number of, uh, of uh, through that sort of device quite happily. Keeping up with Moodle and the way that is evolving is a very large resource. So yes, we've got two, two techies that look after or, or are associated with that uh, application, but that is a big resource and a big, big commitment. So the strategies change. So this is the unevenness. So for us, something like Moodle, uh, or for SAMIS, we might look at doing an in-house or a, a, a Campus M type solution because it makes perfect sense. Yeah, from our perspective, they're relatively low cost, uh, not, uh, not a radically changing thing. Moodle, we, in a sense, how do we get that mobile opportunities for our students there? Is it's much more community developed. And there's going to be us working not on the technical side, but where our skills sit. So, for instance, there's the Moodle for iPhone development came out a few months ago and they're now doing Moodle for Android and Moodle for Windows and Moodle for all sorts of things. So it's the style sheet solution that sits, uh, sits on the application. What we can do and what we're very good at, which resonates with the talk earlier, is we can get people together in a room, focus groups together to drive these, drive through various scenarios on these to collect information and send back to the developers. The developers are eight other institutions within a global institution putting into this. So that would be a clear role for us to say, well, actually, learning and teaching from a mobile perspective for us, we want it to be able to achieve this. We can't achieve these within these developments. So we feed it back, and then we get the information, get the enhancement, and then we'll, we'll install the new uh, set of style sheets. Or we just tell users that there are apps out there. We don't support one. We don't necessarily we just make people aware, and we leave it up to the users to make those decisions. Uh, and we just got to make sure we can communicate with them that way. So given the nature of those two beasts, we have to have an uneven, or we will get an uneven development in, mobile, in a mobile university. And that gets slightly worse in the sense of, well, not worse. Uh, it gets slightly more challenging or interesting if you look at the face-to-face -face technologies. Um, these are much more diverse. They're more diverse for, for people at Bath because we're relatively new to this, so other institutions are much further along in the way that they use their face-to-face -face technologies. But the interesting things coming through is is we've just at the divergent phase. So really, it's going to have to let it rip, let it roll, see what comes out, see what emerges from the staff, uh, uh, how they might want to use it. And then that, and you know you've got a lot of external hosted solutions. Uh, we've, got a lot of, we've got lecture capture going on. But the backdrop is quite low tech spaces. So you know we, we've got to be able to move things in and move things out. So all those lovely examples of earlier it require the movement of kit in and out of space. 
which is ridiculous given people's ownership of devices. They should be able to achieve all of those tasks on those devices. So that's how we have to think about what we're trying to achieve in those, in those learning spaces there. So I built up a picture of an uneven development. Um, Bill mentioned earlier the, the issue of staff um, and how that as another agent of change might hold us back or might in certain areas propel us forward. So it's the challenge we've got. Now on the, on the classic side over there you've got the Collis um, and others there, the four E's model. So what we've got here is of course members of staff are the medium term for us in terms of learning and teaching. If we're going to promote learning and teaching, effective use of this, we need to get staff embraced with it, we need to get staff using it because they're the ones that have to internalise it into their learning activities for it to make sense for the students that come through or that they meet on their four year courses. So this, I'm not sure if people are familiar with it, but it's a very nice um, little way of trying to give a feeling of would you, if you were the member of staff, would you use mobile technologies or would you use certain types of mobile technology, i.e. AOS clicker technologies or Twitter within the way you teach yeah, and the way your students learn. And the basic principle is, if you can get these little three things added together and the top one, which is the external environment, the department, the institution, the rewards, etc. there, if you can get them to cross over that line, then that member of staff, be them right or wrong, whatever decision they make, would actually adopt the technology. And it's quite nice, you break it down to educational effectiveness and awareness, you know, if you've got evidence that it works, how easy is it to your work, how engaged with you, what do you might get out, what might you get out of it, they're all interlinked. And as we say, the environmental issues, environmental factors at the top about uh, culture, reward, etc. So this is a beautiful thing here, but then I was thinking, well, if you were a member of staff at Bath, would you automatically, through things that you can see uh, it would influence these, would you adopt any use of Twitter? Yeah? And if you look at, so all I've done is take the titles of our staff development programme. Um, very traditional staff development programme. We run lunchtime sessions, we run workshops, and we run three-week three blended courses where people go through a whole set of learning activities uh, to sort of get them to, to move away from induction, introduction level further on. Now, if you look at that, there is nothing there about necessarily in your externally factor about mobile technology. Well, a little bit about clickers and a little bit about, about podcasting. So the steer from the centre and from the central staff development programmes is we're not encouraging you, though, you, to, to be aware of, to reflect these two uh, lines about what mobile technologies might be. And then if you look at our teaching development fund, which is, um, as mo many institutions have, up to ten, uh, a system of rewarding or encouraging uh, innovations in the way that people teach. You can get up to a £10,000 uh, one-year payment to, to get things going. You look at those priorities, again, they skew the whole of the staff focus toward, away in this case, this is our last one, away from the use of mobiles and necessarily teaching to other factors. So you've got the two there of aligning you to the curriculum of the transitionary period and what you do afterwards. Now, of course, staff don't observe it because they are part of the process to decide on the priorities, various committee structures, and they are the part of the process to decide on what is the most effective teaching or, 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 or programme that they actually want. So when you offer, it's done on, on, on feet, really, so when you offer mobile, which we do a lot of mobile uh, learning opportunities for staff, they, they, are not, they are not taken up. So they tend to be the recessions we cancel very quickly, so um, it gives you a sort of a feeling there that in the short term, we've got issues uh, around staff awareness of mobiles and how mobile learning can affect them. So that's going to be another agent that's going to slow it down. So quickly, in a sense, to finish up, then we've got a quick look at the students. Um, and for me, uh, the students tend to be more, because they're not part of designing the learning activity, they tend to be more about the more the same but on my phone, please, type group, because what they want to do is they want to get in and out of systems very, very quickly um, and where they are, what suits them. And we're not designing, as I say, a lot of learning activities around enhancing uh, by using the affordances of the technology. So we've got a survey here, 2,765 students. Uh, it's part of a GISC project. We've got some money to look at QR codes. Um, so these are some of the outcomes of it. Uh, four institutions, Leicester, Bath, Sheffield, and uh, Gloucestershire. Won't go down well. Um, right, so what came out from the survey in terms of the first question is can they... Uh, have they got the technologies in their pockets to engage in a mobile university? If we were to create vast numbers of more mobile-based learning activities, so in a said, do we need 
to provide £1,000 worth of kit to get them to vote, or they use their phones in their pockets. As you'd imagine, uh, similar to all the other conversations coming through, messages coming through, they have. Yeah, no problems. They've got good phones, relatively well, sophisticated camera phones. Uh, most, most of them are Wi-Fi enabled. Most of our teaching spaces are Wi-Fi enabled, so that's fine. A little bit of uncertainty about if they've got a data package or not, um, which is quite interesting, is the unsure, which is quite loud. So there's, a bit of, there's some issues there that we need to un uh, think about in terms of student <laughs> occupation. So they, they can, but the next question is, will they? Um, are they willing to make the step to say that if we build these, will they, not only will they come, but will they engage with it? Uh, and you've got two sort of things I'm, I'm picking up here. Firstly, from the same survey, would they actually pay for the stuff? And of course, um, no. There's a message. Um, which for these groups and these groups aren't, aren't a necessarily a great surprise because those institutions are face-to-face -face teaching institutions. So the message that comes through is, why would I want to pay for that when I got a, a, a thin client machine that I, and all over the place that I can walk in and use and I get all the materials there and then. Um, so there has to be a very good reason when you design the learning activity. Now we've come across this problem when we start to design a lot of SMS gaming activities, uh, which if you actually count up the number of texts involved uh, to complete the, the decision matrix, can get quite expensive, or not quite expensive, but a large number of texts. So that has to be factored in. The other one I've got is the, from our, just left now, George, the Vice President of Education, is that in fact this isn't mobile learning and the mobile university isn't on the student agenda. Uh, this is what the ticket he was voted in for, and he was, an, he was a really, really good Vice President. He got through most of the things he needed, but if you look at that, the student body who are voting in these people are very much about, well, we just need things like feedback. We need to know if we say something, what's happening. These are the things that interest them. They want to know, get their own uh, funding sorted out, get the academic executive, the student body, to be much more effective than it currently is. They're not similar to the sense that the messages staff are getting. They're not driving a mobile uh, learning or a mobile university. So that would act as another slight hindrance. Um, so that's the two messages there. So they can, but they won't necessarily, or they won't necessarily will, that, will they do it or not. So this is where I want to finish up with, uh, in the sense of where does this leave us for 2015 in, this, in, the, in the sunny West Country? Well, it leave us a lot of change from where we were in 2010, and not a radical change from where we were in 2005, to be perfectly honest. Um, we will expect, I will expect to see, without the drivers, without the alignment between the staff body and the student body for what they want to do uh, without in, within the context of face-to-face -face institution, I will expect the developments, and we'll see uneven developments, very much about letting you do what you can currently do on a laptop or desktop on a mobile device, Yes, you'll find that Moodle will let you do quizzes and wikis and discussion groups and all of those types of things, but it's still steered very much to you. It's not the device that's giving you the enhanced learning. It's you're just getting in and out a lot easier on your phone. Uh, and therefore, unfortunately, though, because I've got a soft spot for it, less about the other side. Uh, do we need that, or is that definitely going to be the outcome? Well, clearly not. It's just a realignment of priorities in a, uh, which might not come in a tightening, tightening uh, resource envelope. So that's the sort of message I wanted to leave. Hopefully you can think of, if you've experienced them, there's similar things and you know shortcuts, I would love to know. Uh, not only what you did, how you, did, how you mixed the pot, so please get uh, in contact with me there. And I should now pass it over for, for the last few minutes for any questions. Thank you very much, Andy. Any questions for Andy then before lunch? Middle of the back there, Tom. Hi, uh, Andy. Uh, Colin Addy, University of uh, Wolverhampton. Um, I kind of uh, sense from the last but one slide that uh, you, you think things are going to change, even though the current indicators are that uh, it looks a bit like um, there's some things that are sticking, hold, you know, blocking the system. Um, I, I agree with that absolutely because I think um, these probably the students we ought to be looking at are the potential students, the ones that in four years time will be coming to the university or, or whatever it is for, for 12, 15. How do you think we um, take our colleagues who are our staff colleagues and our current student body along with us um, if indeed we give ourselves the job of sort of driving this 
uh, in order to get to where I think I th where I think you're kind of indicating we ought to be in 2015, as opposed to just watching it all not happen. Yes. Um, well, if I can go back, though, it's and Bath. Are, Bath are no different to um, other other institutions in, in this sense that. In fact, to take the staff body with us, there's a growing feeling that our staff development programmes are not geared or designed to take the staff with us. So those are heads up. You come, we inspire, you go away, we never see you again, or we seldom see you again. We get a usual suspects through the system, we don't take advantage of, of, of connecting. This way doesn't allow us really to connect with those that aren't aware, don't know that they don't know, or haven't got the time, etc. Um, so, even, so what we're looking at really at Bath is the sense learning from, we've had a couple of higher education academy um, projects, sort of train, uh, change academy ones, where we've taken units, groups of people that are teaching a unit, either when the unit comes towards the end of its degree scheme review, or there's a set of annual monitorings that have come through to say, well, we can do that in the sense of the cows come home, but it's not going to be effective. But we're finding if we can take units out with subject librarian, learning technologists, student, uh, and a number who teach on the, the unit, they can actually start to do a course redesign. And that's once so they're starting the course redesign phase is when we can introduce the technology component. So you normally get everybody talks about what will the technology do me and we spend a day persuading them not to talk about that. And then they do the course redesign aspect to what they're trying to achieve, the learning activities, how the face-to-face -face will work with the online. And at the end of it, you've sort of taken a group of four people who will then split up with the nature of the beast and go off and work on other units. So people like Julie Salmon up at Leicester have got have vast numbers of people going through the system this way. Uh, there's not any clear evidence it's causing, led to change now because it's quite a slow animal to change in the sense of the way staff use technology because they only have a certain number of bites of the cherry each year or each semester when they teach those courses. But I think that's going to be the emphasis. Now that of course has a slight tension with resourcing uh, in, a, in a slightly tighter uh, resource envelope but I think we have to look and think that we've done lots and lots of heads up we do lots and lots of just in time stuff support but we probably we do need to rethink the way we develop staff Brian. Hi Andy you were talking about student use of mobile technologies I have an interest in staff use of, of such technologies particularly at events like this mm -hmm. so there's a whole load of us with a whole set of technologies we've got a good Wi-Fi network we're actually being quite conventional with a bit of PowerPoint and a bit of talking. So what do you see perhaps at the symposium next year, ways in which we could use these technologies to enhance our professional development or perhaps even at alt in September? Mm, yeah, uh, the problem, I think the problem with the, these types of events is they're, so they're snapshots, they're one-offs. So I've got to motivate you to use certain technologies that will be a burden of get the readers on or engage in this texting activity, etc., which will be cost you, and you've got to find out if it actually va adds value. So um, it would be, I think, more to drop you into smaller groups. You could break this up very nicely as a set of small group activities, but there needs to be a lot more time in the schedule and the program to allow that and you won't get the nice tight outcomes, it'll be all fuzzy and you'll go off and say, well, it won't work at my institution because this is the way we work at my institution. Um, so the real way is to get you to, to sort of look at, yeah, it would be nice to have clickers here. It would be, I could have done it, but it would take a large chunk out of this session. Now, if it's a one-off, I don't think it suits it, um, unless we can get proper activities with Twitter and other things in and get everybody on board. But there is a golden opportunity now. Oh, it should be running sessions on these. It should be workshops. It should be full of workshops about te classroom technologies. Brian, are you just complaining about the programme we put He's together? Because <laughs> <laughs> if so, you can leave. <laughs> right, it's a last, pitch for next time, isn't it? That he wants last to run question. A last okay, question. Heidi Fraser Krause on the University of St Andrews. I'm, I think St Andrews as an institution is even more um, traditional maybe than, than Bath even. And I think that the problem that we have across all institutions is that I don't think the case has been made on the educational effectiveness issue of technology. I mean, we've, there's been great hullabaloos about Webs of Teams and Blackboards and Moodles, but if you look at what's in them, it's PowerPoint slides. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the, the reason academics haven't engaged with a lot of these things is because they don't see them as valuable. And I think that that's where we've got to make the case. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not even convinced there is a case. Mm. But I think that that might be one of the, mm. 
I think now, yeah. Um, no. can I, I'm not sure your mic was working, so I'm just going to. The question is about measuring the effectiveness of the use of these technologies, essentially. Yeah, and, and demonstrating to other people their effectiveness to change their practice. So I was very happy to show this off. Um, but if you're, you probably know more about this, what we're doing at, at Bath in terms of classroom technologies than most academic staff at Bath know because there is not the community of practice at the institutional level. So we trundle off very happily our smiles. It's fantastic stuff. Follow the links. We're really getting places. But yeah, we don't share it within the institution. We either sit within our disciplines we all, and we don't find the space to actually move across and we don't have necessarily... I'm, I'm going to have to bang on about it because I'm a staff developer. We don't have the educational staff development program to give people space to come out and do these sorts of things. So it is very, very difficult. You kind of get this heads up if you're not part of the institution. Otherwise, it's a lot of work to find out about it. Yeah, well, that's it. We don't know until we do these. And I have to admit, the, the economics ones aren't showing a great amount of value for Twitter. They're interested in the idea, but Twitter might not be the solution because we need, we need walled gardens, we're looking at different Yammer services, etc. <laughs> but we don't know until we put people through the process to say, well, actually, and we've got to be honest with people and brave and say, no, absolutely useless. Yeah, it doesn't achieve what you want it to achieve. But you've got to go through that to, to get, yeah, to explain. Okay, on the absolutely useless note, <laughs> we will um, break now for lunch. Can we just say thank you to Andy?